Hey everybody, Matt here with FinBomb, and today we're going to be making a spreader bar, which is going to catch you more fish offshore, tuna, a whole bunch of other pelagics, and I'm going to show you how to make this from start to finish. This is the final product. We've got a 45 inch spreader bar here, and we've got 10 of the major baits, and we've got five of the minor baits that these are chasing. And on the back, you're gonna be able to tie on your favorite marlin lure or skirt or tuna feather or whatever you have to catch your fish. So let's get into it right now. So I've laid out on top of a pool table, which is a good place to work if you have that or a fold out table or a kitchen table. I suggest putting down a white towel just so you can see all of your ingredients. And if you drop a bead or a swivel or something, that's really easy to see and pick up. But this is what I believe I need. I do have all my other rigging supplies nearby in case I'm forgetting something. I suggest you do the same. First off, I've drawn a quick diagram of how I see my spreader bar looking. I'm gonna do some measurements in advance. I'm gonna do some measurements as I go. I'm just gonna kind of feel it out, but you'll see through this video, my process of how I rig everything. You'll need obviously your squids or your octopus skirts, your hoochies, whatever you want to call them and whenever you want to put on there, that's up to you. You could technically make a spreader bar out of a bunch of marlin baits. You could make them out of a bunch of these squid. You can make them out of um, say jet heads, you know, items like this. You can make them out of technically whatever you want. Um, I'm going to be making this spreader bar out of what you see in front of you. And these are examples of what would be the actual bait that I want the tuna or Dorado or whatever I'm shooting for to actually bite. The size bait that I'm going to trail behind is going to be bigger than my actual largest uh, decoy that's going to be on the spreader bar. This is a nine inch. Let me measure it to make sure. This is a nine inch bait right here. Uh, this guy right here looks like a six, um, but I want whatever is behind that actually has a hook in it to be larger. So this would be about as big as I would want uh, for a rig. This would be probably a great size here because it looks like it's, you know, two inches larger than my biggest bait inside of here. It's a different color, so it looks like a different predator that would be going after this uh, school of bait. Um, I could probably use this guy right here if I wanted to. Similar size and similar color, but it's so much farther behind and it's a little bit thicker profile. It's got more inside of the skirt, so it's gonna flop up and down more. Um, it also has different actions. So with this plunger head, it's gonna be jumping out of the water and then going below, below and then jumping out of the water and going below. So it's gonna have a completely different action than this. It's also gonna be much farther behind and look like it's going to be attacking our um, inner decoys. So just think about that before you start putting this together and before you even buy these products at a tackle shop or online is what is this supposed to look like? How do you know, what is the final product gonna look like inside of your head before you buy the stuff? Whatever you do, you're probably gonna be okay. At the end of the day, it's trolling. You know, do these things look exactly like the exact fish that they're eating? Probably not. You know, it's just disturbance in the top of the water. It looks like maybe fish are boiling on bait fish, and then they're gonna want that bigger fish, they're gonna eat it. So don't stress out about this too much. It is it is trolling, it is pretty simple and straightforward. So just kind of use your best judgment and have fun with it. At the end of the day, if you're making this, you're probably making this for one fifth of what you're buying it for at a tackle store. So maybe make four of these, five of these, and try them out. And sometimes they work better on certain species. Sometimes they work better in certain daylights. Sometimes they work better at different speeds, but um, maybe have four or five spreader bars on the boat. So this is, these are the basics. So here's your baits. Obviously you're gonna need a measuring tape. Um, you're going to need a whole bunch of different crimps and sizes, a lighter. You're gonna need your crimping tool. I suggest you don't use a cheap one. This is the uh, Jinkai brand. It's super high quality. Um, it's Star Sanyo, Japan. Really, really good tool. The cheaper ones, they're just harder to work with. So whatever, if you already have a cheap one, then great. If you're gonna buy one, spend the 80 bucks and get this guy. I've got 400 pound mono, uh, 135, which I, I might be using, and 300. I might actually not use the 400 for this rig. The 400 is gonna be used more for this main guy that goes in the back. What I'll probably do is use the 135 for the sides 
here on the spreader bar, these two sides, and then these other two sides. And then for my main line going through that actually catches the fish, I'll probably run 300 pound. With 300 pound, you should be able to catch pretty much whatever you wanna catch um, as far as pelagic species offshore. And if it does get chafed up a little bit over time, you're still looking at maybe 200 to 250 pound, which still should be able to catch you essentially whatever you're targeting. You're gonna need a Sharpie for marking. You're gonna need whatever beads you like. So these are actually are recycled from a Mardi Gras necklace, but I like them and they're shiny and they're easy to use and they were free. So I'm gonna use some of those. And I might use some of these. These are like the little craft beads that are triangles um, with a little hole in the center. You'll need sleeve swivels. So these are, um, you can make these if you wanted to, but they're much easier to just buy. Um, one little cheat. So this guy, if you look at it, it goes on your bar like that and it's going to be right here and that's what you're gonna attach your light, your, your mono to that's gonna have all your baits on it. Now, if you said, I don't have these, I don't have access to these, what you could do is take that off and what you could do is say, put a simple swivel right on top of here and then you could take, if you had the appropriate size crimp and slide a crimp on the right side and the left side and essentially you've made the same thing. So if you want to get creative and or you have to get creative, I think that's a way that you could not have these if you didn't want to buy them because maybe that's an 80 pack minimum or whatever, but there's an idea for you. Um, I'm going to need five of those today, I believe. And I've got some sleeve protectors. These chafe protectors, you can use whatever you want. There's also these type. These are a little bit bigger. I'm not gonna use them because they're a little big. I'm not even gonna use the green ones. I'm gonna use the small stainless steel ones. Um, they're gonna be exposed to the air, which is cool. Um, they'll dry pretty quick. These guys with the plastic coating are nice when sometimes they don't get as much air to dry. I'm gonna need a snap swivel. This snap swivel is probably, I don't know, 350 pounds. So super stout, very good one. This guy's probably, 300 pounds simple swivel. So they're stainless steel ball bearing. You can use a cheaper one. You could use something simple like this. This would be brass, not even stainless steel, and it probably won't break and it will work well for what you're doing. But you're gonna take all this time to build this and you're saving so much money anyway, you might as well buy a nice stainless steel ball bearing swivel um, for it. I know these aren't sure, but like for all this other stuff, you might as well do it. Because if you do catch a fish, this isn't gonna be you know, your main area, like say you have a tuna and it's doing this big circle, a big tuna and just keeps doing these death circles forever and forever and forever. I want the least amount of resistance on that so my line doesn't twist. So if I have two of these on my rig, let alone my swivel going to this guy, the tuna can make as many circles as it wants and I'm not gonna have any sort of line twist. So I like just using the right stuff and the better stuff. Um, I think that's about it. So if I'm missing anything, it's because I just didn't have it here. You'll probably see me as I build it but these are the basics for what you need. Okay, let's get into the project. We've got our stainless steel bar here. Uh, by the way, this is 1 8 stainless steel bar and the inner diameter of these sleeve swivels is just over 1 8. So I think it's like 0.128 and this is 0.125. So that is the bar that I'm using for this rig, but you can use whatever you want. I wouldn't go too much thinner than this though. Otherwise this thing is gonna bend really hard and probably just be garbage, you'll spend all this work for nothing. So what size do I have here? I have a 45 inch bar. So if we take 45 inches divided by five, we're gonna get nine inches. So nine inches, every nine inches we should be able to put one of these guys. So let's give this a shot and load them up. One, two, three, four, five. So if one goes at the end, one goes in the side, one goes in the middle, one goes at the end, we should be looking at 45 divided by five. Oops, 45 divided by two is 22 and a half. So we know at least this has to be 22.5. Now, what has to be 22.5 though, is the middle of, if you look at these sleeve swivels, the middle of these two humps is where we want to put 
the, the actual measurement. Now, what's gonna happen is this can move over. It looks about a whole quarter of it. This swivel can move a quarter of an inch. Hopefully that's all right and everything goes good, but you have to imagine when you're dragging this thing, you want this thing to be even. Um, we are gonna have two pieces here. So what I'm gonna need actually is two more sleeves for the way that I'm gonna rig this. So sorry in the what you need category or video, part of the video that is incorrect. We need two more because I came up with an idea of how to rig our triangle support out of the gate. So we're actually gonna have two of these next to each other here on the first from the outside because one of these is gonna be used for our triangle and then one of these is gonna be used for our actual daisy chained decoy. So you can kind of see in the diagram, there's two swivels next to each other. So we'll have to do that math as well. But at the end of the day, we're gonna have to have this guy dead center. Okay, so this is gonna be another item. This is just a simple crimper, but it's a little bit bigger than the Jing Kai one. Uh, a bit more stout rather, same size, but it's just a bit more stout. It's also cheaper. Like I said, this is like more of a precision tool, I think for me. So I'm gonna use this guy to crimp on these sleeve swivels onto the stainless steel bar because I don't care about this as much. Whereas I use this for my copper um, crimps. So let's get this started. First off, I know that the outsides have to be on there and I know that I'm doing 45 inch, so Let's get our first crimp on. I'm gonna take this, put it right to the edge, just so I can see it. And I'm going to start my crimp. Put a good amount of force on that. Come over to here. And essentially, you're just crushing that sleeve swivel on. So you can see it should look just like that on both sides. And that way it's not gonna go left or right. It's just gonna stay right there. The end of it is crimped quite well. I'm putting um, quite a bit of force, about as much force as, as I can put on here. And um, it looks good. Came out good, just like that. So that's all you gotta do. So there's my one, all of my other pieces just slid off for that. So that's why I'm putting my two outsides on first. That way, as I bounce this thing around, as I crimp them all on, I don't lose them. But what I should do before I lock the ends is make sure I have the right amount. Because if I mess this up, I'm gonna have to cut the end off and then I'll have a 44 inch piece. So if that happens to you, don't freak out. You'll just have um, a shorter bar overall. If, if you goof up. So now I'm gonna take this end and now permanently make this. So I actually cut these, if you're wondering what to cut these with, I mean, a hacksaw will work. You could probably use a pair of dikes, they'll destroy them, but you could probably use that. I used bolt cutters, simple. I think I had like 12 inch bolt cutters, cut them just fine with no issue whatsoever. Brush this guy on here on both sides and we can move on to the middle. Especially having both sides crushed, that thing is on there really well. Okay, so now we're gonna have to do our dead center. So you can do, use a calculator and figure out your exacts or just do it step by step by step. If you have your two outsides, well then you can find your center. If you have your center, you can move this over and find your center to this, which would be here. So. Let's find our center to these. And we can take the center of those, of where the actual center of the sleeve is. And we have 43, looks like 43, a little over 43.75. So 
we're right about there. This is a special tape measure that finds center. If you have a pro tape that does center, then awesome, use it. If not, then you're gonna have to do the math. So I'm just gonna make sure this is accurate. Looks like 22. That looks like 22. It has to be a slightly left. So excuse me while I figure this out. Maybe I'll cut this out and fast forward it for you guys. Okay, so there's my mark. So I'm gonna pinch the side and then I'm gonna crush that on. Make sure I use two hands. Okay, so I got my dead center. Now, so this is where I'm gonna think for a second here. If the bar is gonna be pulled this way, right, this is gonna be my triangle, then I'm going to have to take these on this side and I'm going to be pulling from this side on the outsides. So the inside is where the bait's gonna be. So the inside needs to be centered which means that these will be slightly outside. side. And crush. And then these right here, just go right next to it. So we're just going to crush that on there. Okay, I'm just going through and making sure that everything is spot on, which it looks like it is. I mean, if you're not spot spot on, is your rig not gonna work? No, um, it might drag slightly left, slightly right, slightly left and slightly right, but to be honest, probably not because these swivels can bounce around and the way that I'm going to anchor the whole bar, evens it out quite a bit. So all of this, you can use your Sharpie to mark all your points. I didn't, um, and that's just fine, but you can. So at least now you know how to do it if you want to do it that way. So at this point, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, let's see. I'm going to take my 135 pound Actually, I'm probably gonna use the one, the 300. I'm gonna use the 300 for these. So I want to figure out my triangle. So it's, I can just eye it. I mean, I can pull from right here or I can pull from right here. So I think the more narrow you are, the more it's gonna to wanna to bounce around left and right because it's almost like you're connected here. The farther out your triangle is, the more your bar will be stabilized. So I'm gonna do it about right here. So I'm going to have an equilateral triangle. So if I take 
this side of my triangle, it's because it's gonna be the outsides, right? These inside swivels are gonna go this way with all my decoys. The outsides are what's gonna hold. I'm looking at 24 inches. So I would need 24 inches, which actually comes off the table, which is completely fine with me. I don't mind that at all, but I bet 20 inches will work just fine. I'm gonna do 20, so almost equilateral triangle. So 20 inches is what I will need. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to do 21 inches to account for the loops I'm gonna make with my crimps. So I'm gonna have two pieces that are exactly 21 inches. Now these have to be exact, and I mean exact, exact, exact. Do not make these any more or less than they're supposed to be. And the reason is, this is what you're, this is literally what you're gonna drag your whole spread of bar with. So if you're off, you're always gonna be dragging like that. So I would make this perfect. You know what, I'm gonna go 22. So, this is always as much of an exact science as you wanna make it. But the closer you are to being exact, the better. Now what's cool is I can just take my one piece and measure off my one piece, because whatever that one piece is, is where the next piece is supposed to be. So why am I using 300 instead of 100? Well, it's gonna be, for all intents and purposes in this situation, kind of indestructible. Which is good, because you know you, you don't have to re-rig this often, it might chafe up and things like that. Get different types of boat rash and whatever. So, first things first, my swivel's gonna be above, and this is just how I came up with this. Um, obviously, if you're watching this video, you are a DIY type person, so you will probably have five other methods that you like, that you come up with, that you wanna do. Well, go for it, whatever you're comfortable with, just do that. So I'm gonna take my crimping tool, my crimps um, right here, my lighter. Uh, most of you know what the lighter is for, but if you don't, I will show you. So what I wanna do is I wanna take my swivel. So basically, I'm gonna be dragging, this is the stern of my boat, I'm dragging um, everything towards the back. So this is gonna be in the prop wash, so what I wanna do is align my swivel up right here, and then I'm going to have these connected from here to here. So I'm gonna start off my swivel. What I'm gonna use, is um, the stainless steel springs. Now the only issue is you can use your lighter to kind of push down any of those edges that it made while it was getting cut, which sometimes is hard to get through your crimps. So make sure that those are down and easy to slide through. This guy is for the 135, so I'm gonna have to open my pack and make sure I grab the appropriate one. So here's a 300. So essentially what you do is you find your crimp you're supposed to use, and the idea with the crimps, if you don't know, is you wanna find one that's just slightly bigger than your mono. Not way bigger, you can use way bigger, it'll still work, but just, just slightly bigger is what you want. If, the, if you have that, just do exactly that. You'll slide in your protector, so it goes crimp, protector. Then you're gonna put it through the side that you want. Then you're going to put it right back through. Now at this point, you're going to push it in one inch through the crimp, just like that. You're gonna take this guy, if you don't already know, we're gonna put it on a quarter inch over the mono on all four sides, and it's gonna get nice and bulbous. Okay, some people just make it flat and go pop, 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 and they make it flat and it's like a literal T. I don't think that's worth anything. If it gets conical, where it's thinner and thicker, so not just this little mushroom cap, but an actual thicker conical piece, that's gonna be a lot harder to slide through the crimp. Is this necessary to do? Absolutely not. This is just peace of mind and it's your last line of defense. If you're a horrible crimper, which a lot of people are, maybe your line won't slide through because you have this big bulbous, you know, uh, burnt edge of mono. So that's how you're supposed to do it just like that. That's the perfect way to do it. 
This guy just gets pushed down. What I like to do, if I ever need to, to repair these, to, to reuse this spring, I'm going to bring it down to about right there. Just enough to get a pair of dikes in there and cut it, but watch this. No matter if it goes back or forth, back or forth, it's always still protecting the end of the line on this ring. So that's what I want. So I always leave a nice gap there. Now, if you don't know how to crimp, definitely watch this. Where the loop is on this side right here. This side where it Y's out, you do not want to crimp it together flat like this. Most people do and it kills me to see that. But what you wanna do is you wanna put it inside of the appropriate size crimp, you'll know it either won't fit or it'll fit. And you wanna come out to about right there. And then you're going to crimp. You're going to do it till you feel resistance and stop. All you're doing is putting a pressure and even pressure on both sides of that line. You don't need to crimp through the line. You're not trying to compress 300 pound into 100 pounds so that it's only 100 pound. That's not the point of crimping. You're just supposed to compress it. That pressure of two crimps in these long dual barrels, that's plenty. Trust me, it's absolutely plenty. The other cool thing is if there's a little gap there, you're not gonna get as much corrosion because these two dissimilar metals are not always touching and there's uh, room for them to dry. So if you crimp it where it's just snug against it, you're always gonna get corrosion because two dissimilar metals under salt water will always corrode. So this is another reason why I like to do it. But if you notice this guy up close, you're gonna notice that there is a, an opening, a flare on either side of this barrel. This side is less important, but I still do it because what if it gets stuck on, on a mouth and then it's, the line gets pulled this way? Well, at least it has a little bit more of a curve to it instead of a sharp angle on that crimp. But this guy, if you crimp that down flat, you are just compressing the most important part of this terminal tackle. Don't do that. This is how it should look. This is absolutely flawless and perfect. Okay, so now um, I'm going to take this side and do the exact same thing. So I'm gonna be able to do this quite a bit faster. Uh, as you know, we're gonna slide this guy through. We're gonna find out 300 pound. Okay, so now that we have both of those, that looks perfect. This guy is going to get crimped on this side. Now, you'll, you're gonna notice that I'm not going to put on this side, I'm not going to put these protectors because it's 300 pound mono. Why did I put on this side? I think this side's gonna get the most drag and pull um, and it's also next to another line, so I think that's where it's gonna wear out. I don't think that I need it here. Of course, you could definitely put it here and it's not going to hurt. Um, but with 300 pound, I mean, honestly, it would just take so long to go through that. And honestly, even on this side, it would take so long to go through that. I mean, years and years and years and years and years of dragging. So is it necessary? Honestly, probably not, but it's really cool to, to see it. So um, if I wanted to, I could use some of this stuff because I think I've run out of the 300 pound stainless is kind of the other issue as well. So if I wanted to, I could put it through there. Since I'm filming this, what the heck? Let's put it on there. You guys are probably laughing at home. He's putting it on, he's not putting it on, he's putting it on, he's not putting it on. Um, it really doesn't matter, guys. Um, but with fishing, confidence is super key, so I'm gonna do it. That way I can't say, oh man, it broke because of this. Okay, so now I've got two more of those. I'm gonna take two more of these dual barrels. And I'm going to do the same thing. So crimp, protector. Do the swivel. I'm back. Pull through one inch to an inch and a half, whatever. Get that lighter working. You do want to let it cool down just a little bit because if you just slide it through immediately, it's going to put pressure on that. that you, it's going to put pressure on the actual um, burnt piece that you don't want to put on the burnt piece. 
and it's gonna flatten out that bulbous piece. So again, I'm gonna have a flare on both sides. As long as you have that bell flare on both sides, you're doing it correctly, and you're doing it better than most people do it. So after a while, you're gonna start seeing people's crimps and go, hey, dude, you don't know how to do crimp. Let me show you. And they're gonna stop losing fish and thank you. Or they're gonna say, shut up, I know how to fish. I've been fishing forever and all of that like some people are and they don't wanna learn new tricks. Okay, so for how I'm rigging this, and I'm not saying this is the only right way, this is one right way, but there's a million others. However you wanna do this is fine, but this is how I'm doing it. Oh look, I left an extra crimp on there. So, no problem, I can probably just live there forever, or I can redo this later when I'm done so that it's prettier, but th this won't affect the actual performance. But that's it, so it's an equal triangle there, or at least these two sides are equal, coming straight through. Now how I'm going to rig this main line is different than a lot of the rigs that I've seen, but I think that it's great. One reason why I really wanted to put the sleeve protectors up here and I didn't really care about there is there's gonna be three here in a row. And I figured, well, if there's three in a row banging around, you know, over time, what if sand gets on it or whatever, I don't want them to, uh, you know, get beat up. So that's why I put these stainless ones right here. So what I'm gonna do is take my 300 pound 300 pound is going to be my main line, like I said. So I've got 300 pound going to the actual bar itself, but in the, in the middle, the main reason why I want 300 in the middle is this is what I'm gonna be actually fishing off of. These just are pulling decoy skirts off the side. These, these little guys that I don't really care about, and they're not gonna be that much drag. And even if I, you know, I get a, a marlin come up and swipe at this with its bill, it's not gonna catch on anything, so it's just gonna beat this up and it doesn't matter. But this main line, I recommend going 200 pound um, all the way up to 400 pound, depending on where you're fishing and what you think you'll run into. Um, so that's why I did it like that. So for this main line, I don't know exactly how many feet. I'm gonna do that in just a minute here, but this is essentially how you start the top. The only thing that I goofed up on was I left an extra barrel swivel sitting on my line, which like I said, I could just crimp like that and it doesn't matter, um, but I'll probably just redo this whole thing because I'm only gonna be wasting one more crimp and uh, some mono. Okay, so now I'm going to be working on my side skirt. So I'm working this way. I'm gonna work on the outside skirt and that's going to be this uh, squid skirt or octopus skirt. Then I'm gonna put these squids just like this. So I'm just gonna kind of map this out to what I think looks good and then work on the second one and so on and so forth. Because once I have this in line, I'll know where the second baits go. So I'm gonna take my 135 pound and I'm assuming that this is the bar. Not assuming, but I know that this is my bar right here at zero. And I'm gonna say, okay, I need some room for a crimp. So I'm gonna do one at five inches. I'm gonna do one at 19 inches, and I'm gonna do one at 37 inches, okay? So that's gonna leave this daisy chain here on the far left side of the spreader bar, right? So this will be port side, will be this right here. And this is the distance in between. And for me, I think that looks pretty good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this mono and I'm gonna put it right up here and then I come all the way down to 37. And that's where my last crimp is gonna be that holds on the last skirt. But what I'm gonna do, in case I ever wanna add another skirt to the back of this and extend it, I'm gonna go all the way to 39. Because that leaves me a little bit of a tag end below my crimp that I could always add an extra, you know, scoochie like this on the back end. If I just want it longer, I can always just add it. So I say leave yourself a little extra there. So what I'm gonna do, is I'm going to cut this thing off right here at 39 inches. But what's gonna be my little trick here, 
to figure out where my crimps go is, um, I said five. So I'm gonna say, okay, or not crimp, yeah, crimps, but here. So five inch, I'm gonna say five inches. And I'm gonna mark it with a Sharpie, right? So I said five, then I said I'm gonna go to 19. So I got 19, mark that on both sides. 19 went to 37. And then I'm gonna mark that on both sides, right? So now I can kind of say, okay, I can drop that and say, okay, I know where these are supposed to be. <clears throat> so off of my first swivel goes this guy right here. So keeping in, in you know, the, the precedence with putting on all of these guys, the sleep protectors, I'm gonna keep that up and I'm gonna put these on. So I've got cut a couple more so they're ready. Okay, so I think we need one more. So, off of the top, I'm gonna have to take my bar, and I'm gonna bring it this way, and I'm going to put on my first crimp. So, it's not gonna be that size. Since I'm using 135 pound, I'm gonna go one size smaller. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to work from the back up. So I'm gonna say, okay, if this is how it goes on, then I have to work from the back up and I'm going to be putting my first stopper in. So my first stopper is going to be a double barrel crimp. Now, there's something I wanna point out here that um, you can use just the single tubes, like that's a double obviously. You can use a single and that can stop your bead but in my opinion, why not just use a double barrel? Because A, you can buy these large packs of double barrels, which means you're buying in bulk, which means they're cheaper. And B, when you crimp this down, it's twice as wide, so you have even more stopping power to stop your bead. So my opinion is I would rather use uh, the double barrel for that. But yes, you can use the single tubes for this. So that might be some of the questions um, on your minds. If not, there's something to think about anyway. So first off, I'm gonna take this crimp and I'm going to put it right here. And I'm going to grab my crimper and I want it to stop right there. So since I'm gonna have a bead, I'm gonna put it just behind my Sharpie mark. So the bead's gonna go just in front of that and that's the thickness, so it's gonna be perfect. If you're off by even a quarter inch here, guys, it really does not matter. So with this guy, I'm just going to pinch it right in the middle nice and, and lightly um, really like I said this is just stopping a bead uh, this is not any sort of load bearing for retaining a fish so it just does not matter so once I have that these guys do not have the cuts in it yet so I am gonna take these these are great these you can get at Home Depot or wherever but I'm going to just I'm actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try this I've done this before I take the edge of the mono and I'll take it and I'll cut it at an angle a very sharp angle. That sharp angle I can use to puncture the bait many times, more than not. That way I don't take off any of this rubber. The more rubber you keep at the tip, the less likely it is to slip over a bead or to break apart. So if you can leave that on there, then go for it. These actually come pre-cut on this brand. I think these are pure fishing brands. 
um, and they cut the tops off, but they're like super stout. I don't think I'm gonna have an issue with that, especially if it's not load bearing, like no fish is gonna eat this and run away with it. I think we're, I think we're all good. So now I'm gonna see if I can just go under the bottom. Now we don't need to put a whole stack of beads on this one like you would a lure. Uh, some of you might be asking that question. I don't think I'm gonna have any luck here because it's so far up, it's just gonna bend. So let's start cutting here. There's that opening, just barely there. I'm gonna try and get this in, and if it doesn't work, I'm gonna have to cut some more. But there we go, it just barely slides out, just barely, which is perfect. Now when it goes all the way back, that bead I can feel right here at the top, it's not gonna slide over that bead, it's just not. And like I said, if I wanna add some more to the bottom, look how much extra mono I have sitting out of that crimp. I could literally take a little bit of extra mono put it through a barrel, just like that, and then through the other double barrel, lock this together and put this on the back. And literally I've just added an extra skirt if I want. So that's a really cool way to just add on down the road. I say leave as many options as possible. So boom, that guy's gonna go in the back. Now we're just gonna keep up with this process and put on another double barrel crimp. I'm gonna put our bead, any color is fine. It's nice when the inner diameter, diameter is exactly what the mono is, but when you use a double barrel, it kind of doesn't matter if it's too big like these ones are, they're a little too wide, but the double barrel crimp is so wide, it's perfect. So another reason why I like double barrels. So we come right up to here. Like I said, we're gonna come back just slightly to accommodate for the bead. Let's crimp this sucker in place in the middle. One nice, light, simple crimp. This comes here, take another squid, and we're going to cut down little by little until we can see the smallest of openings there. Perfect. There's my bead already on. Take this, put it in reverse. This comes down to here. Now I've got one more to do. So I'm going to take another crimp, slide it on, slide it right back, accommodate for the extra bead, crimp it down in the center. Nice and light, just enough to hold it in place, but not enough to damage any of that line, which it kind of doesn't matter because I'm using 135 pound. And then come all the way up to there, and then I'm gonna take my hoochie skirt Put it through. So I'm kind of utilizing some different colors um, and different uh, lengths as well, different sizes. So it almost looks like these are smaller bait fish and there's one a little bigger. And then, oh my gosh, all of a sudden there's this big marlin lure chasing everything. So that's kind of the effect that I'm trying to get. So this is my whole port side daisy chain right here. This whole piece all done, just like that. So now I have to crimp this onto this port side. So I'm going to take the appropriate sleeve, push it through, take my sleeve protector, put it on, come through my swivel, back through my crimp. This is basically, should be uh, pretty easy for you guys to follow. If you haven't made this stuff before, you've already seen me do it a few times. It's just the same over and over and over. Now at this point, I mean, I, I'm just really beating a dead horse here, putting, you know, uh, melting that mono, but why not? It's an instructional video, so I might as well do it as perfect as humanly possible for you guys. All right, let's crimp that down. And in this case, yes, I am going to still flare out the sides because I'm gonna just do it right the whole way. So what's kind of cool about this is it's almost like there's some crazy small micro bait that this bait's chasing. So I, I like that green uh, chafe protector. That's really cool. So that's what one side should be in its completion. So let me hold it up to the camera nice and close. And this is what it looks like all the way through. So now we're gonna mimic this exact same size that we did on the other side. So let's just pull our line out so that we're ready and then we can just crimp it all the way through. Now I'm probably not gonna show you the exact symmetrical starboard outside I'm gonna show you this inside. Then I'm not gonna show you this one because these two are just duplicates in reverse of the other side. And then I'm gonna to skip to in the video this main line. So 
I'm going to make this one and then I'm going to, we'll be over there in two seconds. Okay, so I've done the other side. What I do recommend is that you do any symmetrical side. So if you're gonna do the two outsides, just do them at the same time. Cut them at the same time, make them at the same time, and then put them on. There's two from, there's two one in from the outside, same thing. Do both at the same time. So I've done my outsides, now I'm doing my insides. And what I have measured, I actually changed this up a little bit. I have these uh, six inch skirts on the front. I took two more because I didn't have any on my second from the outside, um, I, or first from the outside. I took them and cut them down to four inches. And I did this because I wanted a little bit more green in the front, but I didn't want it to be in the, exactly parallel. I wanted it to be a little closer. So I want everything in my rig to be slightly off center. Some people have them dead center all the way down. That's fine. I think it'll look better slightly off center. So what I've done is I've taken my 135 pound. I've come in here and for this rig, if you want to copy my rig, my first mark at three, my second mark at 11, and my third mark at 27 inch. So I'm gonna go ahead and start making these. Now remember at the 27 inch, that last one, you're gonna add an extra two inches or so, um, just in case you want to add on to this daisy chain later. You do not need to leave extra. If you know that you're gonna have it a certain length, then just cut it right below it, enough to actually put a crimp. At minimum, you're gonna need a half inch. I just leave the extra for the purpose I described above. Um, and, and while you're making this, you don't have to use my pattern. I mean, you can move it forward or backward, two inches, three inches. Um, keep in mind, I'm making a 45 inch spreader bar, which is really big. I mean, that's almost a four foot spreader bar. Three feet is what probably most of them that you'll see in the tackle store are. And I've seen some that are just literally two feet long. And there's two in the outside and one main in the center. So you're gonna have to adjust this um, as you make your different bars um, in accordance to what you like and what you're fishing for and what kind of rig you're willing to drag behind the boat. These rigs are huge and they can be really cumbersome as you are trolling. And if you have multiple of them, you know, you wanna make sure they don't get caught in each other, flip around, spin, do all kinds of weird things. Uh, if you get hooked up on one of them, keep in mind, you're gonna to have to pull in, you know, three or four more of these uh, if you have three or four more out. So you might wanna have less, you might wanna have more. Just figure out what you're trolling for, how you wanna troll and uh, and do so accordingly to make your life easy. Okay, so same as before, I am just working on this. I'm gonna take my 300 pound and I'm gonna cut that at an angle. And I'm gonna try and use this every time to make my hole to get this guy going for the, my daisy chain line. I'm gonna throw a bead on this thing. Any color doesn't matter because it's going underneath. I'm gonna take this main line here. I'm gonna cut it at an angle, I'm gonna stick it through the back, get it coming forward. Okay, and then I'm gonna keep working down. Remembering to leave that little space there for the bead. Crimp right in the center, just enough to hold the bead and the bait, but nothing more. Okay, and then my last one. All the way through, so that's going to be my first one in from the outside. And then I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna take my chafe line, cramps, and I'm gonna come through and complete it. Now this guy's gonna be an almost exact fit. I do not have that much room for error. The way that I did this, because I added these on last second, and that's what I wanted to do. So, 
I'm gonna have to really make this perfect. Slide this bad boy in. The cool thing is, is as we know, these are not load bearing on a fish. These just are load bearing for dragging these skirts. So at the end of the day, I really don't need to have a mushroom on the back or a whole bunch of extra. I just need to crimp this to where it's not going to come undone, which is really almost anything is perfect. I'm still gonna do my bell flare though. Okay, so there's no mushroom on this one because I've made them shorter as I just said, but it really doesn't matter. Literally, this is the only weight that's going on there, so it's, it's just not gonna back out. But as you can see now, when I pull this behind the boat, if this is my straight line, I've got this little guy right up front, this guy slightly at a diagonal, this bait's right in the middle of two baits, then I've got this bait, nothing over here, then this bait is right in the middle of this one, and this on the side, so everything is kind of at this diagonal. So, like I said, you can line them up just like this and have them straight in line. That will probably work just the same. I actually think this will work better because I think it will present a little bit more natural, less exact uniform, less symmetrical. If you look at a bait school underwater, they're usually never exactly 100% symmetrical. But, like I said, both will probably work. So let's do the other side and then we'll work on that main center line. Okay, so how I rigged this is, uh, and you can do this any way you like, but um, they do make these that come with two swivels. And what that will look like is it will have another swivel, probably still the same silver color, but it'll be just inside of this hump. So essentially when you're finding the fish in line, you're finding a swivel that's like an eighth of an inch away from another swivel and your torsion is really not that bad. So I think that that's just fine. I just didn't have access to that part. Otherwise I probably would have built it that way. So I came up with a different system. My system, is essentially going to consist of having two of these crimps. It's gonna go a crimp, then I'm gonna pick two colors here, and they're probably going to be, I'm actually gonna go a little bit overboard, and I'm gonna use four beads. So I'm gonna go here with a crimp, it's gonna to go to a bead, that way if one bead breaks, I've got a backup, and I don't have to re-rig my whole system. And also, these are really big, so for what I'm doing, which you're gonna see how it works when it's done, you're gonna be like, yeah, that makes sense. Goes to my triangle bead, which goes to a normal plastic bead. Glass beads are more durable, so if you have access to or glass beads, then go for it. I'm gonna go through this swivel, and here, and I'm gonna explain what I did exactly. Then, it's gonna go to another one of these, crimps that goes to protector. This is protector slightly short, but it will still work. Okay, so essentially this is how it works. This is going to be pulled in line. So I'm gonna try and lock this into something here that's not gonna move. And then I can explain to you how this actually works. I'm gonna put a tackle box here. So essentially, this triangle is gonna be pulled in line. So this is the bow of the boat right there and that's the stern, so it's gonna be pulled going this way. Now what happens is this is gonna be here and this is gonna stay inside of here. This swivel is just gonna be in line and you'll be fighting it in line as well. But I put a chafe protector where it's gonna be crossing the swivel and or this little piece right here that is sharp. So as long as it's inside here, we should have no issues and that 300 pound is still gonna be 300 pound. Now to lock the placement of this so that no matter what, my I'm always protecting that 300 pound, I'm going to enclose it with these beads and this crimp. And then these beads and this crimp are also gonna slide down here. So it's gonna look something like that. So as it's dragging, this can go back and forth, it doesn't matter, it's still gonna be protected. And if that swivel swivels over, it's fine. If it gets pulled to the back as I throw it off the boat, it's not gonna get caught anywhere. It's always gonna fall in between. So these are gonna be like right next to each other. And no matter what, this going back and forth, it's always going to stay in between and on that green area, no matter what, just like that. So that is 
my idea and it looks like it's gonna be great because no matter how much I push it or pull it, it's gonna be there. And if I break either one of these beads, I should still be good and it will stay inside right where I want it to be. So now what I'm gonna wanna do is first off mark this top by closing it. So I'm going to do my last line of defense, you know, which is really emergency thing, which is like, hey, you don't know how to crimp. Hopefully after watching this video, you know how to crimp, but it does make you feel good. So I'm gonna go to there. Work this guy over its full loop. down. Okay. So once I have that, now I'm, I can start measuring. So essentially what I want to do is have this green sleeve directly in the center of the stainless steel bar. So if this is just like this, this might torque a little bit. This guy right here. Now if I lock that just like that, no matter what, it'll be in the center. And once it goes straight, it will be just fine. down. And I'm going to push this over. And I want this incredibly snug. No wiggle room whatsoever. Nice. That will not back off. So at this point, I, uh, I am done. Uh, what I could do up here, if I have any issues, I could do something like, you know, a little bit of um, on the top of this, I could put shrink tube around this just to make sure that they're all in line and stay nice and simple and clean. And that way, no matter what, it doesn't tangle, but it looks like no matter what, no matter how it wants to tangle, it's always going to come back to straight. So I probably don't need that, but I can always modify it if I do need that. Um, and that looks really good right there, all protected and can run back and forth. Good to go. And then my in line is going to come all the way down to here, which is going to come right to my coast lock snap swivel, which is then going to go like this to my main bait, which I can change out willy nilly depending on size and color, which is going to go back anywhere from five, ten, five, eight, and 10 feet. You could also go back 15, 20, 30, just do whatever works for you, whatever you'd like to do. If you'd like to really why, if, you, if you're going for Marlin and Marlin are hitting this, and that's what you want to do, you might want that full 20 feet because you're going to want that shape guard for the tail um, across a long fish. Um, we could probably get away with like 14 feet for, for most fish. Most, mo like even if you get a blue Marlin, a 14 footer is probably like 700 pounds depending on the girth of it. So, you know, hey, if you have 20 feet of, of uh, 400 pound mono, you're pretty good for a pretty big fish. Okay, so this is how you're gonna connect your spreader bar. You're gonna have your main line here coming off your reel. That's gonna go to a snap swivel, and that's gonna go to the first swivel here, and then you're gonna lock that. And this is how you're gonna be dragging it right through the water. So you actually have multiple swivels throughout the whole rig, which is, which is great. You can never have too many swivels. So let's pull this thing through the water and see how it acts. All right, so we're all done making our spreader bar. Thanks for watching the video. Hope it all made sense. If you do have questions, put them in the comments. Otherwise, please, please give the video a like if you got any value out of it and subscribe to the channel if you wanna see more fishing and also how to's for rigging. So I'm gonna go troll this thing. See you next time.